the difference between bribing God and reminding God of your faithfulness and desire to be rewarded? One more time. What's the difference between bribing God and reminding God of your faithfulness and desire to be rewarded? Um, there's a big difference between those two. I think people get it construed with, you know, uh, when I pray to God, praying to a God who's omniscient, it's pointless to remind him because he already knows. Um, it's pointless for us to go out there and say, God, you know, I'm still waiting. You know, when you pray to God, there's different levels to it. When, when you're feeling low about whether or not God has heard you, the Bible says, come with thanksgiving. When you say, God, you know, I'm believing for a car, the next time you pray to God, don't say, God, I'm believing for a car. Say, God, I'm thankful for when you're going to bring that car in your timing. Lord, I'm just thankful. Like, for me, I'm waiting on a car, right? And God told me, while you walk to Walmart to get the car from your mom to go to work, be thankful about what you do have. Do not have to worry. God's going to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory, but his riches and glory is predicated on his timing for you. Because what God is showing me through walking to work is he's showing, like, say, I want to teach you first to be thankful for two legs. Because many of us asking God for all these big things without being thankful about the things we do have. So sometimes when I go to God praying, I start my prayer off, God, I thank you for 10 fingers. Lord, I thank you for my ankles. I thank you, Lord, for two feet. Lord, I'm thankful for me, me being able to walk. God, I'm thankful for my lungs. By the time you start being thankful for God and little things, you begin to be like, man, why am I even bo uh, boring God with a bunch of requests when I could just entertain him with rejoicing? Right. So there's three levels of prayer. There's uh, whoa, man, I forgot I'm that quick. Uh, the first R is uh, uh, repentance. Um, no, no, no. Number one is rejoice. Number two is repent. And number three is request. This is the way I pray. I'm not trying to say, you know, you follow these three R's, you can come up with three P's, three O's, whatever you want to do. But how I pray is I say, God, first, before I even ask him for anything, before I even confess my sins, I start rejoicing. I started thanking God. God, you know what? I thank you for life, man. Yo, God, you woke me up this morning. And the more you start engaging into rejoicing, you begin to find out, man, how good, you begin to see how good God is or how good God has been to you, that you begin to forget about the things you don't have because you're so in awe of what he's graced you to have. Because while I was walking to work the other day, God was like, don't you know there's someone that's thankful for two legs you're walking with now? There's people right now in wheelchairs. Man, I had a person come into my wife. Every time they come in a wheelchair, they got a smile on their face. I'm like, there's people who are crippled who's more thankful than people who have two legs. And that's so sad because we have more to be thankful for. There's people in Africa who, who is, wish that they can have the bare minimum you have right now. So with that being said, I'm not trying to bribe God with good deeds to make sure he can bring my Bentley in time. I'm not trying to bribe God like she be trying to bribe it for, for what you call that thing, uh, 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 what that car you want? Uh, that thing. I would never bribe him. You ain't trying to bribe him, but I, she was talking I, I about that. What was that thing for? What was the thing? What's it called? A Lambo. The Lambo. Like, you know what I'm saying? We don't got to sit there and be like, I got all these, I, I'm going to work and I'm going to do this. I'm going to bribe God and make God bring it quicker. No, I'm saying, God, your season is going to come. And that's it. Listen, with God, if God hasn't moved now, he has a reason. He has a reason greater than your request. Because you don't think God can't bring you a car, God can't bring your wife, God can't bring your husband, God can't bring you the things you ask for. God is sitting there saying, the more you ask proves that you probably don't really trust me. But if you could ask me one time and let it go, that shows that you are in love with him. That you say, God, I know you, God, you got me. Now, that's a day-to-day -day fight. Because you're going to always face, man, she just got blessed with a new car. Thank God they got to take the transit. You know, you begin to look at, man, God, why is not my time now? God says, I'm not responsible for everybody's progression. People progress on their own accord. There's many people who got, you ever seen people who got happy about a car and now they got to pay that car off for 15, 20 years? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> that's a long, that's a long loan. That's a big loan right there. That's a Lambo. That's a Lambo loan right there. <laughs> Shoot, that's like, anyway. But the point of the matter is, go to God with rejoicing, then go to God repenting, and then by the time you finish rejoicing and repenting, you probably have a few things to request from him because you're so thankful for him being God in your life. And I make sure I answer that question right. What is the difference between bribing God and reminding God of your faithfulness? You don't got to remind God of your faithfulness, man. Your faithfulness will speak for itself because God can care less about how faithful you are indeed. He's concerned about how faithful your heart is to him. Because many people are faithful to God with the wrong heart. 
That's people who pay their tithes, go to church all the time, they do all the rituals and duties. And the Bible called them Pharisees and scribes and hypocrites. It was the people who, who said, God, I'll wash your feet with my hair. God, I'm remorseful over my sins. God, I don't even deserve to be in your presence. Those people God works on behalf of. So you don't got to worry about reminding God about your faithfulness. Your reward will come. But your reward would not come with a rotten heart. Yeah. Yeah, just real quick, um, you know, with God, many times promotion comes after appreciation. Um, many times we have to appreciate, like, just basically what Josh said, we have to appreciate where we are and what we have before we're able to be promoted to what we want. Um, and it, it, when it comes to just asking God over and over again, um, like he said, many times it, it's an indicator of saying that we're not ready for it yet because we may abuse it when we get it. Um, you know, I, I want a, I want a girl, I want a wife, I want a wife, and then you, you, you get her, and then you may not treat her the way that um, she should be treated because you're not ready. Also, because it comes with timing. God has certain things that he wants to teach us in certain seasons, and we want to bypass certain seasons of our lives. Uh, we're not done loading. We're not done learning yet, and we can mess up the thing that we get prematurely. So I always trust in God's timing um, and be satisfied and content where you are. Um, I wasn't going to say anything. I felt like Josh kind of kind of tied it up and then Ishmael kind of added on to to my original thought. But um, the question says, what's the difference between bribing God and reminding God of your faithfulness and desire to be rewarded? Um, have you ever heard like uh, the saying, like a, a humble person doesn't say that they're humble, like it's part of being humble, like you don't have to say it. Um, part of being faithful like you don't always have to say that you're being faithful. If you feel like you have to remind God, first of all, I, I, I think the, 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 the part that is on my heart where it says reminding, what's the difference between bribing God and reminding God of your faithfulness and desire to be rewarded? Um, maybe you just worded this question like this by happenstance, but I, I, I don't really tend to believe in that. But I think that if you feel like you have to remind God of anything, then perhaps you have a tainted view of God because the Bible tells us that God is not a man. He can't lie. He doesn't forget anything. So how are you and who are you, more importantly, to feel the need to remind God of anything? Like he's God. He doesn't need your help to be God. Did you have, you had a, was that an amen or a? Right, right, right. So you can remind him of, of, of his word, but you don't have to remind him in the sense of, God, I've been doing this, so why aren't you going to do that? Because what that really says is just like Josh said, is that there's, there's a heart issue. Why are you being faithful? Are you serving God so that you get a man, so that you get a car, so that you get a business, so that people notice you? Or are you serving him and being faithful to him because he's, he's God and you don't know what else to do with your life but to serve him? Because that should be the place where we're all, where we're all at is that, God, if it wasn't for you, I would be in hell or on my way to hell. And now that I'm, I'm saved and I'm, 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 I'm part of your, your, your family and part of your kingdom, I don't know what else to do with my life but to serve you. And so regardless, and Josh always poses the question like, if you're praying for a husband or praying for, a, praying for a wife or praying for a car and that's what you're constantly praying for, if God never gives you the greatest desire of your heart, will you still serve him? And so that's a question I think we all have to ask ourselves, regardless of whether or not this is our question, is why are we being faithful to God? And if we ask ourselves that question and we find out that our faithfulness is rooted in what we want and our selfish desires and our flesh, then that's a point where we can stop and pray, God, fix me, help me, work on me. Set me aside, pull, pull me in, into a season where maybe I'm not serving so much. Maybe I stop volunteering and serving because I know that even if I'm doing it, if I'm doing it out of the wrong heart, how can I really serve you correctly? So take a moment and really just ask yourself, why are you being faithful? And I think that'll answer a lot of questions as to, as to why you, you, you feel the way that you feel. All right, I'm going to share a story that kind of piggybacks off what um, Josh said. And it's funny because of getting this week, um, the Lord told me that I was going to share the story with somebody. And um, so um, the car that I had before I had now um, 
had about 300,000 miles on it. It was a Honda. And um, towards the end of 2013, um, the past, like, like the end three months, like, my car broke down on me, like, five, six times. It got to a point where it wouldn't even start. And um, each time it broke down, I would just thank God for, like, the time that I did have with the car. And, um, you know, God never left me stranded either. He always sent somebody to come get me, like strangers. Like, I call them angels. But, um, you know, I just praise him for the people that he sent my way and for never leaving me stranded. And um, just thanking him for the opportunity that I did have with a car. Now, mind you, I didn't have the means to get a new car. Um, there was just no way it was going to happen. And I remember one day I was just like, you know what, God, um, if you want me to have a new car, you'll provide it for me. Like, I'm just not going to worry about it. And um, that Christmas, somebody called me and told me to come to their house, and uh, they gave me a stocking. I was going through the stocking, and um, there's a pair of keys in it. And I was like, what is this? They was like, well, go outside and look in the garage. I'm like, okay. And so they opened the garage, and there's this brand new car. And I'm like, what in the world is this? They were like, somebody... Um, Somebody said, anonymous person, I don't know who it is to this day, but they said that during their quiet time, God told them to give me a car. And um, it was 2006, it only had like 50,000 miles on it, which is not bad. But I'm just saying that to say that I was not even expecting, like I was just, had a pure heart and I was just really thankful for what I did have and um, just thankful for how God just provided, you know, each day and, um, and he provided like you just you just don't hear that happen all the time so but i just want to share that i hope that blesses somebody you know god is able and um, i think sometimes we put him in a box like he's able you just got to trust him so